Roger Sinha, choreographer dancer living with his young family in Montreal, started dance fairly late in his early 20s. After studying ballet and modern dance, he really felt he needed to get in touch with his own cultural roots and studied Indian dancing. And never threw anything away. His style is a combination of everything that he's ever studied, weaved together in a seamless way. I think for Roger, art and life equal harmony. Roger, how did you start dancing? <laughs> I was uh, studying economics at University of Toronto and um, wasn't very happy. I didn't think it was really right for me. I was there, there in my third year and not really even understanding what I was studying. It's a very dismal science. You know, surpluses and deficits and deficits and surpluses. And when I'm unhappy, I tend to kind of eat a fair bit, maybe a bit too much, especially when you're in residence in university. So I kind of, uh, well, at least after my third year, I kind of understood economics because my weight was in surplus and my happiness was in deficit. So uh, I decided just to sort of start taking dance to almost in a way just to get back in shape, to uh, to you know lose a bit of the lose a bit of the excess. And I came across uh, jazz in the very beginning. There was this club nearby the university, and uh, started taking jazz dance classes just to sort of get back in shape, the kind of shape I had when, before I went to university. So from there, how did you get into professional dancing? Well, I pretty well decided after a few weeks that this was what I wanted to do in life. So I dropped all my studies, which uh, didn't exactly make my parents very happy since they paid for my university education, and uh, did dance full time. At some point, I wanted to find out more about that part of me which was lost. I was born in London. My father was Indian, from India. My mother, Armenian. But I wasn't brought up with that culture. Um, I always keep saying I was brought up on fish and chips and not curry. So I didn't really um, get a very good exposure to uh, either my Armenian or my Indian culture. It just, it, I, it just didn't happen. When you're an artist, you want to one of the wonderful things about it is you want to really explore all the things about you that you're able to transmit to a public. So at some point I wanted to find out more about myself. So I started taking Indian dance classes and it started from there. The warm-up that I do is based on uh, Bharat Natyam which is a form of classical Indian dance that comes from the south of India. You take positions where your, your pelvis is very low to the ground in open position called Aramandi, and you strike the floor with the flat part of your feet. That's uh, one of the, the important aspects of, of classical Indian dance. And it reflects a, a certain as, a, an important aspect of my work uh, where I integrate uh, Indian dance with contemporary dance. It actually kind of looks like sign language sometimes, you know? You have to learn them in order to do them. Um, the contemporary side of it is, you know, you just get used to it, but for sure you have to have a little bit of, um, of the Indian way of moving to, to be taught to you. In my work, there's a great deal of training that's required. There's so much to learn. Okay, you have a contemporary dance training. It's just not enough, and it never has been enough. When I do an auditions, when I try and hire new dancers, I have to see their capacity and their aptitude for the kind of work that I do. Number one, they have to be very technically strong. You can't do my work if you're not very, very technically strong. It's quite technical, which I like, and it's very specific because he uses a lot of the mudras, the hand gestures of Indian dance, and I wasn't familiar with that at all. So in the beginning, I really had to focus on getting those in my body, like, quickly. And once that was established, or more or less, it became more fluent for me. My natural way of moving is more like a long kind of like Kung Fu or the martial arts, because I, I took karate and Kung Fu quite a bit when I was much younger. Uh, and integrating the martial arts is actually using the musculature of it, because with all that breaking and locking, 
So taking basically mudras and mixing up with martial arts. Mudras and martial arts. So that's where the locking comes in, because you get that from karate. But as opposed to doing something like this, which is not really interesting dance-wise, you would do something like that. Taking the mudras, the details, the curves, the roundness, and making it flow in that way. It's a very distinctive style. I, of, because of, it's as unique, I suppose, as, as I am, being half Armenian, half Indian, born in London, living in English Canada half my life, and then come j'habite maintenant ici à Montréal. And uh, it's very much about me and who I am and my physical autobiography of who I am. There's truly a beautiful harmony in the way that the, your movement blends together. The basis for me is uh, improvisation, finding out what is in common with the way my natural way of, of, of moving and trying to make a connection with uh, those very traditional and ancient and classic forms like Bharat Natyam and finding the link, the common ground between us. So it's not like patchwork. It's not like a bit of Bharat Natyam here, followed by a bit of ballet there added on to a little contemporary over there, which was admittedly in the early part of the 90s. That was a kind of choreography I was doing with respect to Indian dance. Kind of a quilt work of stuff where you could clearly identify different. The idea with me with working uh, particularly in Loha is to be able to fusion it all together so it seemed seamless, where you couldn't really tell the difference between the part which was classical Indian and the part which was contemporary. It was melted together. Can I just hear track, tr track 3? What is the relationship of music with your choreography? Uh, um, previously, uh, because of the nature of my work, I had a, a fair large emphasis on having a more kind of an Asian sound that comes out of my work. Uh, working with, uh, for example, uh, a, a, a South Asian composer. Uh, who would create music that uh, had that kind of sound with, with tabla sound, with uh, sitar sound. Um, then at some point um, with this piece that, I, that I'm doing now, uh, Apricots, um, I wanted to go away from that. As, as with my creative process to do something very, very different, find a composer who was not necessarily in that world and, and in that environment and didn't have that training. Because I wanted to go outside this preoccupation with my South Asian uh, uh, background and do something somewhat more universal, um, which, uh, which reach, would reach, I think, everybody. So uh, I chose Bertrand Chenier, a composer who had already uh, uh, had the joy of dancing with, dancing on his music in a previous piece uh, of choreography, uh, not my own choreography. And at that point, I asked him if we could work together. I remember when we, uh, when we first did this, I just wanted to bang, 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 nothing else. You know, I don't really think about style or uh, thing like that. I, I, I knew that uh, uh, Roger was uh, in Indian inspiration dance, but uh, uh, I'm not really preoccupied to try to uh, reproduce uh, a special kind of music, you know. It's really an intuitive approach. Uh, with the composers that I work with, they have to come in and actually see the movement, come into the studio and watch the choreography evolve and develop. So I would create, um, I work fairly fast, and we work fairly fast. We'd create a, a, a duet or a solo or a sequence, and the composer would come in. And in the case of Bertrand, the next day afterwards, he would, after seeing this, and he wouldn't even go home with a with a tape or a DVD or anything of it, so to look at it on a monitor in his head, with his intuitive mind, he was able to come back the next day and give me a piece of music which almost matched up completely the time frame that we were working with. Yeah. 
you know, uh, I'm a pianist, keyboardist, but I also uh, can use percussion and uh, I can play bass. Uh, so the the first instrument I was uh, I used with uh, apricot trees, it was a bass. I can build the thing and uh, I use a lot of electroacoustic processing and um, slowly I build the sound atmosphere. His music, uh, the composition, has uh, is very actual. It's very, very uh, uh, electroacoustic, and uh, really matches and blends well with the work that I'm doing. Has your motivation changed over the years in terms of your creative process? No, it is. It has had to have changed simply because I'm a family man now. I have two children. Uh, my daughter Marika, two years old, my son Damien, five. My life has come out more balanced and in equilibrium. Papa. Yes, we're you gonna go to bed. <sighs> Being a choreographer and artistic director and, and, and also general manager of my company is very, very demanding uh, on my family life because it's not nine to five. You're thinking about it often and constantly. Uh, you will get ideas in your head at 8 o'clock in the night that you just simply have to just work through. Now that's very difficult when, you're, when your son is there, your daughter is there wanting all your attention. So you have to make a, a very, and it's, I find it very difficult because I love my work, I love being a choreographer and creating. It's very, very difficult to take that idea or take that um, inspiration and put it somewhere else. Put it in a shelf somewhere. Because the most important thing for your kids is to simply be there to be present, to be with them. And you can't be with them 100% if you've got these crazy ideas banging around in your head. We're doing a show at Lennoxville tonight. Uh, it's about two and a half hours away from here, towards the, the south. I have to go through all the costumes and just remind myself of who they are, because I don't want to forget any, because they're all over the place. This is Badin. This is Benoit. Oh, Jesus. Who's this? I'm asking these questions to myself because uh, we don't have the same cast today. Is this going to work? No. Mwah. Touring is complex. There's a lot of organization behind it. There's a lot of people behind the touring logistics that, that are able to help me out. But uh, on the day, um, basically, I have to pretty well organize it myself and put everything together. I have that kind of manic energy because it's something I, I somewhat thrive on. It's, it's the energy of this business. It's sort of the way things are here. It changes all the time. There's always a push going. It's a bit intense. I really like the immediacy of dance and the immediacy of putting a, a, a show together. When I hear about, for example, how long it takes to put a film together, I know I just I can't do that. I'm too impatient. So we basically, the show is, I, I hate to use the word, but it's packaged. It's all set up. It's all there. And we just come in and in one day, generally, one day we go from A to Z. This tour is, is difficult because uh, it's one shot deal, one day, and we don't ha we need to do the tech, the spacing, the dress rehearsal, and the show in the same day. So it's really tiring. And often the theater are the, it's, it's strange to say, but the the floor of the theater are really hard. So it's hard on the body. But what I prefer the best is when we go on tour for a, a, a longer time and we have few days in the same theater and we have time to uh, explore the light, explore the space and dive in. This has been my experience with Roger. It's been one of my great disappointments in the company that we haven't had a tour. We haven't gone. We have, I have no doubt that people in Europe want to see this. I have no doubt people in South America want to see this. Even go as far as India, Asia, why not? When they talk about everyone's so, everyone's so positive about, oh, look at the fusion, look at the fusion. It's like, well, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Come on, let's get on with it. This is ridiculous. These one-night shows, you're, you're, you're creating a legend. We don't, I don't want to be a legend. I, I want to be a reality. Let's, you know, we've come this far. Now, these one-show things are like, they're like trainings. Because I can't really give my best show this way. Uh, he'll come, oh, qu'est-ce qu'il fait? Il vient ici. Presque il passe. Toi, tu vas aller chercher... Oh, sorry. 
We have so many versions of the trio. I've lost count. It's a big, uh, it's a big gap between the audience and the stage. It's not something I'm used to. I like being very close to the, to the performance, especially my performers, because I feel so distanced from them the whole day, because usually I'm up there watching and working with the lighting, uh, the technical person, and taking a kind of a distance view from it. But when the show starts, I like to get down here and be with my dancers, because that's how I feel connected to them. I want to get close to them, because there's nothing more I can do. Nothing more I can do. The show is on. Hey guys, that was really, really great. Fantastic, fantastic. Hey, wow, you did it, girl. Yeah, Thanks, you Roger. stuck it out. That's bravo. Yeah. We knocked them out. We, the public was extremely enthusiastic about the work. They've never heard of Cine Dance before. They've never seen my work before. I felt that they were discovering something that perhaps they've never seen before. And that's the opportunity of modern dance, contemporary dance, because each choreographer has its own language and own, own identity and, uh, and own artistic, direct, artistic uh, um, uh, value. So uh, they're, they're seeing something for the first time. And they're leaving the theater with that tremendous, tremendously uh, uh, powerful impression of what they saw. So uh, I was very happy about what I saw. I'm pleased to see my dancers do so well. They gave us three standing ovations. It was a great experience for me. This is a milonga, a dance evening where people come, dance, and have a drink and have fun. And uh, Roger and I come regularly. This is my workplace, but we come here often yeah. to dance. We together. come here to dance together. This is how we met. We met through tango, and this is uh, this is uh, maybe not the place where we met. We actually met on a tango film shoot, but uh, mm -hmm. this is our enjoyment. This is our relaxation. This is him dancing for fun. Yeah, only for fun. Before starting Tango, I was finding it very, very, very difficult. The artistic aspect uh, and the organizational aspect of being an artistic director of a, of a company. At some point, the pleasure of just the dance was starting to leave me because of all the stress of, of, uh, of the grant writing, the organization, the performing. It was getting very, very stressful. And I started to ask my question, well, why am I doing this? I mean, what, what about the joy of dancing? And at that particular time, I was choreographing more than dancing, so that pleasure wasn't really happening for me. So I decided to approach tango, because tango, Argentinian tango, is improvised. You learn the basic steps, and then the rest of it is all improvised. Now, I'm a big improvisational fan. I like doing it in my process, in my work, so this was something that appealed to me. And then I got really, really, really caught up in it, and I started doing it quite a bit. As in all my works, there's physical traces of everything I do. Martial arts, theater, improvisation. Uh, so tango it eventually finds its way into my work. It's just simply that's part of the hybrid nature of what I do. With more balance in your life, your work has changed and certainly the toning and the coloring has evolved. Yeah, yes. It, uh, I think there's, there's, there's less emphasis on the negative, which is, which in the past, I was focusing a great deal upon burning skin. There was other pieces that say that focus on war or, or very, very dissonant relationships between people. 
there is some of that in apricots because it simply followed the, 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 the context of the, the text that we were using. But there's a great deal of harmony in it as well. People noticed and they see, they've never seen this kind of, often they said they've never seen this kind of work, uh, this kind of movement in my work. Where there's a great deal more harmony and cohesiveness uh, among the, the dancers and uh, the, way the, the way this story is being told on stage. It's also uh, a work that I feel that I have, a, in a sense, a larger uh, uh, perspective upon and you need to guide the work at some point. Um, I definitely want to uh, explore this collaborative process a lot more in, the, in my future works. How do you see dance in terms of how it can be absorbed? You absorb it through all your senses, not just the intellectual part of, uh, of your body, through the mind. If it comes in through there in my dances, then I feel I have failed. I feel that the public needs to breathe the dance, they need to hear the dance, they need to smell the dance, which <laughs> is a bit ambitious, but they need to um, have it filtered through other senses than just the visual senses. Uh, so yes, it's, it's, I'm discovering that even more, certainly because my pieces are, are definitely becoming less narrative and, and uh, they had certain aspects of that in the early 90s, and now they're becoming a lot more based on the intuitive creative process of the body and how it interacts, uh, how the dancers are able to interact with each other and their communication to the audience. So uh, having the, the audience feel the movement is, is, an, is an important part of my process. And I feel that I'll always keep working that way. It's always got to be about the movement. Mm -hmm.